If you have a Taurus sun, moon, rising, or Venus, then you are going to be the main character this December, and even into 2022, and perhaps beyond. Uh, there's a lot happening in your sign, so much so that I would actually recommend anyone who watches these readings pay attention to where Taurus falls in your chart, even if you don't have a Taurus sun, moon, rising, or Venus, because what is happening in this sign is going to be affecting the world at large, and we are really starting to feel that this month in December. Before we get too far into this video, my name is Michael. For those of you who are brand new to this channel, I want to welcome all of you back who are joining me again. I know it's been quite some time since I have been on YouTube and uploaded one of these videos. I'm super excited to see what we have in store for you. But before we dive in, I do just want to let you all know that I'm running my holiday sale. All of my services are currently 25% off on my website until December 21st. So if you are looking for a reading or Reiki session with me, now is a great time to book. I think that the new year is a great time to see what we have in store for us for the year ahead. So if you want to get a reading, now is the perfect time. All of my links are in the description box down below, as well as links for the astrology blog that accompanies this video. You can also find me on all of my other social media accounts and follow me there too. I do appreciate that. And let's see what we have in store for you for December. So the reason there is so much change happening in your sign right now, uh, there's actually a couple of reasons why that's the case. First of all, we have the North Node entering into your sign uh, that's going to be happening the day after the solstice on December 22nd. The North Node has been transiting through Gemini for the past year and a half, and it's really representing this reaching for destiny, this yearning for something greater, or, or trying to, on more of a darker aspect, fill a void. And with Gemini, it's like the world around us, the world immediately around us has changed so much. The way we live our lives have changed so much. The way we travel in our day-to-day -day lives, um, you know, going to work, going to a coffee shop, going to the store has looked so different. And those things are all Gemini because Gemini kind of represents our neighborhood. Gemini also rules over the hands. So it's kind of interesting that a lot of us have been social distancing and, and really feeling um, potentially touch starved for a lot of people. Um, so there's been a lot of themes and lessons that have been there that are now going to be entering into your sign, which has a lot to do with material stability, uh, abundance, and potentially even scarcity mindset. I, I think scarcity is going to be a big theme throughout the next year and a half. But where this really lands for you, Taurus, is you are changing. If you felt like you were meant to do something big in this life, then 2022 is going to be a huge year for things to start happening or really setting you up to fulfill your destiny because that is ultimately what the North Node is. It's our reaching for our destiny. And whether or not we do that ultimately is up to us. Um, but it's really affecting you in a profound way. And the astrology of December is super, super interesting because your ruling planet Venus is also going retrograde in the sign of Capricorn. And it's, it's very powerful there because Venus is going to be forming several conjunctions or, or three conjunctions with Pluto in Capricorn as well. Pluto represents endings, transformation, and in some cases attaining power. And there's also, um, there, there's also this, again, we, we had an eclipse in your sign. With the node shifting, we already had the first eclipse in your sign that actually happened on November 19th. So really paying attention to what has happened to you around that time, what happened to you in Scorpio season. And this really brings me to the first couple of cards I drew for you. I already have all the cards pulled out, and, and frankly, Taurus, you have the most cards on the table so far this month, and that doesn't surprise me because there is so much happening for you. We have Death, and we have the Father of Cups. Both of these cards represent Scorpionic energy. Both of these cards came out in the position of the past. And I think there's a lot of meaning wrapped just in these two cards because whatever happened to you in Scorpio season, something was shifting, something was changing. And again, really paying attention to what happened the day of the eclipse or around the day of the eclipse for you, I think is going to be significant to a lot of you. Um, I, I almost get the sense that you know something is changing. 
And if there's anything that you've been putting off or anything that you told yourself you're, you'll get to eventually, um, especially when it comes to your, your destiny or your, your deepest desires, I feel like the time to address that is fast approaching, Taurus. And there's almost this shedding of a skin that is taking place. And your appearance might even be changing. This could quite literally be a physical manifestation for you. Something is changing about you. And that could be affecting the way that you present yourself to the world. That could be affecting the way that you think about yourself. And there's also a lot of activation in your ninth house. That's where Venus is. That's where your ruling planet is right now. Everything worldly is how we can think of the ninth house. It is our world views, our philosophies. It's also travel and higher education. So there might be things like certifications or degrees that could be uh, kind of coming into your life or coming into focus. Um, but yeah, th there's just so much that has changed. And this change might have actually been catalyzed by another person, someone who represents this Father of Cups. Very well could be a Scorpionic energy or another water sign, so Cancer or Pisces. Um, but I don't want you to focus too much on that. I almost feel like this person came into your life to radically change the way that you perceive it. And I actually get that with the Ace of Swords here. There was this insight, there was this flash, this new idea. And it might have only been momentary. It might not be materialized yet. And that could have come through another person. You might have met someone and it might not even be totally clear just how impactful this person is to you. Or you might have come across someone online. This might not even be in person. It, it could be just you are exposed to someone's beliefs or, or an idea or a new way of thinking that is really changing you very, very quickly. And I don't read reversals with this deck. That's just how I relate to the Wild Unknown Tarot. Maybe you own this deck and you relate to it differently. That's totally fine. I just don't read reversals with it very often. Um, but I almost get the sense that death here is showing up kind of in the reverse because there's been changes that you've kind of put off. And now you're finally making them with the Eight of Wands in December. Or there's a lot of push for you to, to change things. And this could be communication again, this Eight of Wands, especially communicating with someone from afar. Could be dealing with travel. There could be some travel this month, which is again interesting with your ruling planet being retrograde. I'm actually kind of surprised to see this, being honest. Um, but at the same time, it's in your ninth house, so it makes perfect sense. There could be some travel delays as well, so if you are making travel plans, be open to the possibility that there might be some delays. Uh, this Eight of Wands actually did come out with the Mother of Swords here, or the Queen of Swords. And she can represent some sort of frustration or some sort of bitterness. Uh, you might be bitter with things not happening quickly enough, even though there's actually so much that's already changing for you. But it's interesting, Taurus. I feel like you're the only one who's actually making moves in December. And everything that you do kind of affects the rest of us in, in some way. And I, I get the sense of, of a chess game here with the Mother of Swords. You're playing chess, but you're making moves. And I actually almost get this, this funny sense of like, you realize how you're gonna win the game. You see several moves ahead. It's like you realize how you can get that checkmate. You realize how you can move forward in your life and get what it is that you want. And there may have been a relationship that ended for some of you. And that could be with a water sign or potentially an air sign. So Gemini, Libra, or especially Aquarius. Or I'm sorry, especially Libra. So especially Libra, but also Gemini or Aquarius with this Mother of Swords. And it feels like that needed to change, that needed to shift. 
Scorpionic energy represents your seventh house, your house of partnerships, and we just came out of Scorpio season. So the way that you approach partnerships or view relationships could really be changing. And that actually makes a lot of sense because there's so much about you that's going to be changing. And, and that is nothing, if nothing to say, you have Uranus in your sign, right? And Uranus is causing you to change or really trying to get you to change. And it's been really uncomfortable for everybody because Uranus is the great awakener. It causes things to shift very quickly or very rapidly or, or in a very profound way. And Taurus, what is Taurus? It's fixed earth. It wants to do what it wants to do. And there's all of these changes that are happening that we've all been resisting, but I think we're not going to be able to resist into next year, being completely honest. And maybe that's the change that you've been resisting. And there's almost this part of you that's just like, well, fuck it, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm just going to change. I'm just going to let go of who I was. I'm going to completely dissolve and become this new person, or I'm going to let my life completely change. I'm not going to try and control things anymore. Um, and in doing so, that's when your path to victory, that's when this chess move actually becomes apparent to you. It's almost like that's how you win in a weird way. And with the Ace of Wands coming up as your challenge this month, Again, this makes me feel like there's a lot of energy that you want to move forward or, or make certain moves or do certain things and you can't. You can't do everything that you want to do, which is actually kind of a beautiful place to be, if I'm being honest. Um, but it, it feels frustrating. And if you're watching this and this doesn't resonate, then maybe what this Ace of Wands represents is your energy just kind of crashing. I do feel like there's going to be really high highs and really low lows for you. And another card that came out didn't actually come out in any position. It just kind of felt very central to your reading is the High Priestess. And she represents what lies between worlds, connecting with our intuition and the eternal now, letting things be unknown, letting things be uncertain, surrendering to a greater uh, force or a greater energy. So there's really a lot here that is shifting. There's a lot that you're opening up to, and it's causing a lot of changes for you. And Uranus is also going to be forming its third and final square with Aquarius this month as well. Uh, or I'm sorry, with Saturn in Aquarius. And that really has been forcing us to change. There really is this big push here for you. And it's coming at you from many different directions. Maybe this Eight of Wands feels like all of these different things kind of crashing on you. And you want to be doing all these other things, but it's like, you can't because there's so much energy that's being forced or, or focused onto you right now. And for the future, we have several cards here. We have the Four of Wands. With the Lovers. And the Three of Pentacles, or Three of Coins. So there really is this, this advancement that's happening. And it's funny that I was talking about uh, degrees or certifications um, because the Four of Wands, I, I often refer to as graduation. There, there could be something that is coming to a completion, something that you are celebrating. For others of you, this is just you rising onto a higher platform in your life. You're stepping onto a main stage. And with the lovers and the three of coins, I don't think you're doing this alone. And even the lovers in this specific deck is actually very interesting to me because it's these migrating geese. So there is something about traveling and potentially even traveling with someone or traveling together with someone, someone you can travel with. But I think that's going to be more thematic kind of after the Venus retrograde, to be honest. Because I feel like the type of person you've been attracted to before isn't going to be working for you after December. 
just being honest, and even after January, because we're going to be in Venus retrograde for 40 days. Venus won't go direct until the end of January, I believe January 22nd, something around then, or somewhere around then. Um, something really big has shifted for you since this eclipse that we had in your sign on November 19th. And what I'm also just connecting with is that your, your ruling planet, Venus, actually entered its pre-shadow phase on that day, on the day of the eclipse, on November 19th. And I remember talking about that on TikTok. I remember talking about that being kind of a portent to what is coming with the Venus retrograde. And this is all very, very interesting to me. Um, for energies that you are, are stepping into, animal messages here, we have the buffalo and we have the hummingbird. You're flying very free right now. There's something about you that is lighter. You know, hummingbird kind of is the message of, of traveling light. And even if you're not physically going anywhere, um, really just figuring out what it is that you need. And that, that kind of actually makes sense with what I was just thinking about Venus retrograde. It is a time where finances can feel really tight or really constrained or very unstable. But trusting that you have what you need this month and figuring out where you really derive your energy as well as your stability with Buffalo. Where do you derive that energy? Where do you derive sweetness in your life? Where do you get your life force in your life? And there is a lightning bolt here in the background of the buffalo. And I'm also thinking of the lightning in the ace of swords that we had and the eight of wands. Things might feel a little stormy, but it's like you're carrying on. You're doing what Taurus does. You are kind of like the, bu the buffalo here. You are the bull. And you're very grounded. You're very much in the earth element, and you're very connected to spirit as well. Buffalo is a very spiritual energy. And I, I always think of those horns kind of like uh, antenna or lightning rods. You are connected to the heavens while having your feet firmly in the earth. You are so supported right now. Even if it feels like there's all of these things that are changing really fast and relationships are ending and, and things are, are coming to a, a sudden close and there might be some pain for you, Taurus, there is so much moving you forward and carrying you forward right now. What you really need to do is surrender to the change, surrender to this flow because it's bringing you to such a beautiful place. And I'm also thinking um, this, this Gemini full moon that we have on the 19th of December. Or I'm sorry, the 18th of December. The 19th is when your planet goes retrograde. So that's, that full moon is also going to be really significant to you. Uh, but that full moon in Gemini, that is occurring in your second house. Your house is of finances. Your house is of stability, of assets, of values. There could be some changes there for you. There might be some losses there, but it, it's clearing out space for something even bigger. And that's really, really interesting. There's a lot that's going to be changing in 2022 that's going to be very uncomfortable for people. But for you, Taurus, for the people I'm connecting with right now, You're making something happen. You're creating the stability that we need. There's a lot happening in 2022 that's going to make people feel very unstable. And I feel like, Taurus, you're bringing that stability. You're giving that to all of us. And it, it is such a, a needed gift right now. And you're reminding us that, that stability comes from our heart. It comes from the foundation of our soul. And you're going to be really experiencing that. And very often with that spiritual connection, it, it does kind of come with a harsh awakening. So if it feels like this month is really, really hard, know that you are being initiated to be a leader into next year. 
and to really step onto a larger platform than might even feel comfortable to you. And you're being asked to let things go that no longer serve you, to travel light, and potentially even relocate. You might be going someplace else or you might be traveling a lot more. And I feel like you're not gonna have to do this alone. Some of you might even be doing something like a travel vlog or, or something like that um, and, and working with someone. And that could be a romantic thing, but it really doesn't have to be. Whatever it is that you're working on, it, it does feel kind of creative or it feels like it just gives you a lot of joy. Whatever it is that gives you passion, you're doing this month, or that's what you're asked to do with this hummingbird. You're asked to find the nectar, the mana that lights up your spirit. I feel like I need to pull one more card, actually. And I know this has kind of been a longer reading, um, but I, I feel like I really need to focus on your energy in specific this month, Taurus. Yeah, Three of Swords. Um, there is some painful energy that you're actually cutting yourself free from. And that process feels like surgery. I think that is what this Venus retrograde might feel like. It, it's you cutting yourself free. There's a lot changing. But it's bringing so much more in its place. And even though the Three of Swords is kind of a harsh card, it's a painful card. It's not one that we usually like to see. It's also temporary. We're reminded of how temporary everything is with the Three of Swords because things sometimes come to an end or there's a sense of betrayal or heartache. And if there have been endings that you have known were coming, I think they will be coming this month. But the pain from that is only temporary. And even though these swords are tied up in, in kind of a painful and, and excruciating way, they're able to cut free from this thread. You're severing connections that no longer serve you, and it feels like for a lot of you, there's new connections that are, are coming in. Ooh, yeah. Okay, the devil. So the devil represents all the things that don't serve us. And of course that comes out with the Three of Swords. And we are in the devil influence with all of the Saturn and Capricorn influence. That's, that what, that's what uh, the devil represents here. You're cutting yourself free. And with Neptune going direct at the start of this month, I do just want to warn some of you, if you do struggle with addictions or if there's just old habits that you have a hard time um, letting go of or that you kind of relapse, that tends to happen around Neptune uh, stationing direct, which actually happened on December 1st, so yesterday. And maybe you are addressing those old habits. What this actually reminds me of, Taurus, it's like a lot of the time when we have relationships around addictions um, or substance use, um, this may or may not be literal for some of you, but just kind of go with the metaphor. Um, when we let go of those substances, when we quit, or when we let go of, of certain habits, we lose relationships that have been founded on those habits. And that's actually how I'm feeling for a lot of you. That, that's, that's kind of um, a, an impression I'm getting. A lot of the relationships that have been found on unhealthy things or things that you just don't want to do anymore, that just don't feel good to you anymore, are coming to an end. And maybe that's where that pain is coming in. Maybe there is a, a sense of loneliness there. But you yourself are growing and, and glowing, I should say, with this uh, lover's energy. And it could be attracting new people as well. I do also have the chariot here, which is again about forward movement. And December kind of feels like a rocky month. And a lot of the time, I, I think 
the way astrologers talk about uh, retrogrades and, and these sorts of energies is to take it slow, take it easy. But the truth is we all have our lives. We all have to live our life still. We can't put our lives on pause just because it's not uh, convenient or conducive to the astrology. That's very rare that we can do that, right? Um, and I almost feel like, Taurus, you have to keep moving forward. And you will. I, I think you're being supported in that. Keep going forward. You're becoming someone very, very important. You're becoming the person that you're meant to be. And with Elephant here as well, it's about getting rid of the obstacles, clearing things out in your life that no longer serve you, and having this strong faith. Elephant is actually one of the luckiest cards to have, so I'm going to leave off the reading here. I will see you in the next video. I do hope that this video was helpful and resonant for you. Be sure to hit like and subscribe if it was. Let me know in the comment section down below what in particular resonated with you or what stood out to you. I'd love to hear it. I always think those synchronicities are super interesting. I know that this time of year is really challenging for many of you, and my heart goes out to anyone who is struggling or feeling lonely during this time of year. I'm wishing you a very happy, safe, and healthy December. All of my links, again, are available in the description box down below, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.